So exactly how do you navigate a transition? Navigating transitions can be tough. I get it. I've been through transitions myself, especially when I had to move from one state to another and became an automatic pastor's wife and a whole bunch of other stuff that I went through. And I can definitely contribute to this conversation on navigating transition. This is going to be good. If you're going through any kind of transition, I encourage you to listen in today because something will be said to help you get through it. And that's the key. You can get through it. This is going to be good. So let's go. Welcome to the Thrive Podcast. If you want to thrive in your life and business while keeping God first, you're in the right place. This is the show for leaders who want to leave a legacy of love, encouragement, and generosity. You want to be remembered for the way you positively impacted the lives of others and made a lasting difference. You want God to order your steps. Sometimes you just need a nudge in the right direction to take those steps. The Thrive Podcast will help you take the right steps, overcome obstacles, and equip you for the kind of success that matters to you. And now your host, Giovanna Lady J. Ellison. Well, hello there, everyone, and welcome into this brand new podcast episode of The Thrive Show with yours truly, Giovanna Lady J. Ellison, your certified leading business coach here to help you thrive and flourish in your life and in your business while keeping God first. Welcome in. So today we're talking all about navigating transition, navigating transition. You know, Psalm 32 verse eight says, I will teach you and tell you the way to go and how to get there. I will give you good counsel and I will watch over you. I will watch over you. Somebody needs to hear that today because you just need to know that you are not alone in what you're facing. God will watch over you. You know, a little bit of my personal story. When I relocated from California to Alabama, learning to be a wife was a journey all by itself. And I give God all the glory. We just celebrated 15 years. Um, but I had to do it while learning to worship and serve people in an unfamiliar place. Um, I want to give a special shout out to my friend, Dr. Lawan Grant. She posted something on social media that I absolutely resonated with. And so much of our stories in this regard parallel, because like, like, like her, my husband was also pastoring when we married. So I was immediately, immediately placed in the role of first lady, you know, after, you know, the church had gone through a significant transition already. And honestly, I really don't think it hit me until, you know, a few months afterwards, because I was focused on my marriage and then, you know, everything else. So it's so interesting because when you go through something like that, and when you are placed in a completely different role, it is a huge transition. So I want to talk to you about navigating transition. And I'm going to be sharing from a few resources. You should see my desk right now. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven books that I have referenced just for this podcast alone. So you are going to be getting <laughs> some major value today. All right. So listen, there are a couple of steps. And consequently, my new book is titled Thriving Through Transitions. And out in that book, I outline five steps, the five step journey to, to going through a transition transition. And the first step is to grieve. You've got to grieve the loss because you're leaving one place and going to another. In my, pla in my case, it was leaving my family and coming to live in a place that I knew nothing about. So you have to grieve that loss because, you know, as much you, you can't sugarcoat it as much as you try to sugarcoat it, you are losing something. You're walking away from something to go to something else. Yes, you're gaining a whole lot of great things, but you're also losing who you thought you were or, or not, not necessarily who you thought you were, but some of the things that you were so used to. Step two is to reframe. It's important to reframe the experience. How can I look at this differently? How can I embrace this differently? I'm going to dive deeper into these steps, but I just want to kind of lay them out right now first. Step three is center. It's important to get centered in the present because as long as you constantly keep looking back, 
you know, that's all you'll see is what you see looking back. So get centered in the present. Number four, step four is to create. So create a clear, exciting and compelling vision for the future. A few podcasts ago, we talked about your mission and your vision. It's important to create a clear vision for where you want to go, not just in your business. We hear about business visions all the time, business mission statements, all that sort of stuff. But it's important that you create a mission statement, a vision statement for your life. And then you have to act. You got to take intentional action where you are. And it's interesting because in my situation, you know, trust, trust is not an easy uh, it's not an easy practice serving in this capacity. You know, um, like Dr. Grant, I've also learned over the years that some people ask to serve the quote first lady because they want to be seen. They just want to be seen. Uh, they want to be close to leadership in some kind of way. Sometimes some people have hidden agendas and selfish motives. Some people are very selfish that way and they, they just want to be seen. And you know, not you don't have to throw any shade or you don't have to throw anybody under the bus, but it's just the reality for some people. So knowing that I am so thankful for discernment because after being in this thing for nearly 15 years now, I can absolutely my radar, my my, my radar is very, very high and I'm able to sense that stuff out very quickly. So I'm thankful for friends. I, I talked about a po- few podcasts ago, how important it is to have the right friends in your life. The kind of friends that I have in my life have been in my life since before I became a first lady, since before I owned a, a thriving company, right? These are tested and proven people who have been in my life since before. And you need people like that in your life because um, those are the people who have made those deposits within you. And hopefully if you're a great friend, you made deposits with them, within them as well. Deposits of love, care, understanding, generosity, encouragement. All those things are so important. You know, yes, you can build up new friendships along the way. There's nothing wrong with that, but cherish the ones that you've built over time. So with that being said, navigating transition, I'm going to refer over. I, I'm also reading another book right now by a colleague of mine, Marshawn Evans Daniels, and she's just amazing. And this book is called 100 Days of Believing Bigger. And in here, we have something about navigating transition as well. And it says this, before a major life shakeup happens, God usually, or usually God, has been trying to get our attention for quite some time. Most of us don't like change. We love predictability and a good plan and a strategy and a checklist to follow. We wrestle with God for the steering wheel. On one hand, we want God to drive, but at the same time, we secretly want to know where he's going, what he's doing, when he plans to make a left turn, if he's going to use the blinker, all of that. (laughs) But then disruption comes in and everything changes. It disturbs our attachment to predictability and anything that has too much of our heart and attention. Disruption is God's greatest classroom. It's one of the ways that he teaches us who we really are, what we're really made of, and how he intends for us to impact others in a greater way. You know, that's so interesting. I wrote a, um, I wrote a letter, a blog post rather, ended up becoming a chapter in one of my upcoming books um, called What to Do When God Interrupts Your Life. And I remember in that chapter, I wrote about when I got the news that mama had cancer and when I ran to the airport, well, literally sped to the airport to go be with her broke every speed limit law that there was to, to go be with her and catch my plane to be there for her. And I'm so glad I don't regret a single day of that hardest time of my life. But I ended up writing, you know, what do you do when your life is interrupted? It's so important that you are prepared because when things happen, if you're not prepared, it will show, right? Uh, I heard Dave Ramsey say, when the tide goes out, you can always tell who was skinny dipping because they're just not prepared. So save your money early and often create a plan. Make sure you have the right documents. Make sure you have a will, insurance, all this. uh, This is called being a good steward. This is called stewardship, right? So, you know, it's important that we don't over spiritualize everything. You know, you got to do your due diligence. You got to do the work. So to that end, Disruption is both a teacher and a navigation system guiding us from our comfort zone to our glory zone. 
by taking us through what feels like a war zone. Mm, It really is a growth zone. When disruption hits, this is a time to lean in and seek God's heart, to ask for patience, perspective, and endurance, and to believe that the obstacle in front of you, to believe that God is bigger than that obstacle. And you can take refuge in knowing that he's going to watch over you and lead you during your time of transition. So let me give you a few pointers, a few tips. Um, The first is to make sure that you are setting realistic expectations, set realistic expectations. And what does that mean? That means recognize that transitions take time and effort. Be okay with giving yourself grace. You know, you're going to feel uncomfortable or even unsure during the process of transition. Don't beat yourself up for that. Don't try to, don't try to make yourself something that you don't really feel you are quite yet. If you're not there, it's okay. You know, you're growing into that place. Uh, It's okay to feel uncomfortable or unsure. Just make sure that you are feeding your mind and that you're growing and that you communicate. Don't grow in a vacuum, but make sure you have that good friend, someone that you can talk to about what you're going through. The second thing you want to do when you're navigating a transition is take it one step at a time. You know, break down the transition into smaller, manageable steps to reduce overwhelm. And if you ever get in a place of depression when you are going through a transition, because trust me, I know what that's like, where you get to a place where you just feel like, you know, you're by yourself or maybe nobody understands. When you're feeling that kind of way, don't make any sudden decisions because the enemy loves to come in and disrupt your peace, disrupt your mind, all of that by having you make some drastic decision when you're feeling low. Wait until you've had a chance to rest. Wait until you've had a chance to sleep. Wait until you've had a chance to get something good to eat, some nourishing uh, food, some some good vitamins in your system, whatever it may be for you to get outside, to talk to someone, talk to a friend. That is so important. All right. The other thing is to practice self-care. That's a big deal. I remember when I first moved here, I read a lot of books. One of my friends, uh, she told me because she had just she had gone through a, a similar situation. She said one of the things that helped her was cultivating her mind. So she read a lot of books into the career that she wanted to be in, and that was criminal justice. And she is a thriving criminal justice attorney today, but she grew her mind by diving deep into what she was passionate about so that all of her focus wasn't simply on her situation. So that's important that you have an outlet where you can exercise your gifts, skills, talents, and abilities. Uh, It's also important to keep a growth mindset There's a book by Carol Dweck called Mind Your Mindset. I know I've given you a ton of book recommendations, but I can't help it. I love my books, (laughs) y'all. So keep a growth mindset. Stay open to learning and growing during the transition and make sure that you use those setbacks or challenges as opportunities for growth. Okay, use those as opportunities for growth and know this, know that um, don't let everybody speak over you and certainly don't let everybody pray over you. Okay. Everybody doesn't have the purest of motives. And sometimes people want to do that again, just to be seen or just to get in with you in a certain way or whatever it may be the, uh, you know, <sighs> different circles are different and you have to use wisdom in interacting with each one. And then finally seek support, seek support. Um, and be careful who you talk to about certain things. Okay. Everybody can't handle what you're going through, especially if you're in a place of leadership. If you're in a place of leadership, never talk down, meaning don't talk about your problems necessarily to someone who is a subordinate or to someone who, you know, um, doesn't understand that level of problem. Your best bet is to speak to someone who has been there or is there in that position of leadership before. OK, um, that is critical um, because while you may get empathy from someone who's never been there before, you won't get understanding. And some people don't know how to carry that. Um, when I say carry that, I mean, keep it confidential. They'll just be so excited. You decided to tell them. And then before you know it, you know, a 100 other people may know. So just use wisdom and who you share with and how you share. Don't be afraid to reach out for help or guidance from friends, family professionals, even get 
therapy if you need it. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. Even coaching, you know, I'm a fan of coaching. So get that as well. Navigating a transition is a process. It's a process. It's a process. It's a process. Breathe. Give yourself patience. Be kind to yourself along the way. Focus on progress, not perfection. Focus on progress, not perfection. And stay motivated by envisioning, you know, that there's a brighter day after today. You're going to get through this. Father, I pray right now for the woman, the man in leadership who is navigating a transition right now. I pray that you would stand before them, stand beside them, surround them with your love, your understanding, your protection, your grace, and your wisdom, and your discernment. Give them the right people around them who will love them for them, not just their position. Father, I thank you for this. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Ah, thank you so much for listening. Remember, where God guides, God provides, where God directs, God protects, share this episode with someone in leadership who you feel needs it, who's navigating a transition. Thanks for listening. And we'll talk to you next time. Oh, wait, wait, go to Javana.com, J-E-V like victory, O-N-N-A-H.com to get your free complimentary Thrive checklist. Thanks for listening. See you soon. It's your time. Are you a coach, entrepreneur, or leader? Are you someone who wants to keep God first in your business? Well then, it's your time to shine. Join the exclusive mastermind of world-class leaders inside Thrive, led by Giovanna Lady J. Ellison. Get ready to clarify your purpose, amplify your strengths, and thrive financially from what you already know. Sign up today at Javana.com. That's J-E-V-O-N-N-A-H dot com.